time for chapter number three of Chocolate Touch. The birds were chirping in the tree outside of John's window, and the sky beyond was deep blue. The bedroom door opened a few inches. Hey, Sleepy, Mrs. Midas called. Everyone else is up. John put on his bathrobe and slippers and ambled to the bathroom. His sister Mary was still brushing her teeth. He had to wait until she finished. Come on, Mary, he said, a little bit aggravated. Don't take all morning. Here you are, Mary said, handing him the tube of toothpaste. While Mary soaked her face, John squeezed the little bit of toothpaste onto his brush. His paste was pink. John made a face at the toothbrush. It didn't seem fair that he should have to brush his teeth with stuff that tasted just like his medicine. A stinky taste, he called it. John opened his mouth and pushed in the end of the toothbrush. As soon as it touched his front teeth, he noticed a delicious sweetness in his mouth. A taste of the best kind of chocolate. He pushed the brush to and fro, and what taste seemed to grow stronger. He removed the brush. The bristles were brown. What kind of toothpaste is this? John asked. Mary was drying her face. The same kind, she answered. It says it on the tube. Blanco Dent, John read, and it was at the same kind that they always had. Why is it chocolate flavored this time, he asked. Boy, it is good. Silly, Mary said. Of course it isn't chocolate. She hung up her towel and swished out of the bathroom. John squeezed some more toothpaste onto his brush and continued to brush his teeth. Chocolate again! It was marvelous, rich, sweet, smooth chocolate. Chocolatey chocolate like the single piece of chocolate from the box the night before. There seemed to be no further need for the toothbrush, so John rinsed it and hung it up. He squeezed out another bit of toothpaste onto his fingertip this time. He put his finger in his mouth and ate the toothpaste off. When he took his finger out again, it was stained chocolate brown. John wasted no more time. He put the end of the toothpaste tube into his mouth and emptied the paste onto his tongue and squeezed it out like a thick, creamy chocolate. Mary looked into the bathroom. Hey, what are you doing? She demanded. Yummy, was all John said. John and Mary were a little late getting to the dining room, and Mr. Midas was already on the way to his train when they sat down to the breakfast table. John ate up all the toothpaste, Mary told the mother. Oh, you sneak, John whispered. Well, you did, Mary reminded him, and that's a waste. Isn't it a waste, mother, to eat all the toothpaste in one day? Mrs. Midas was serving their orange juice. Mary, really, she said. I'm sure John was only joking. He must have been pretending to eat the toothpaste. No, he wasn't, Mary insisted. I was watching, and I saw him squeeze it right into his mouth. He said it was chocolate. Oh, dear, protested Mrs. Midas. Chocolate again. Now I know it was just a joke. He just wished it were chocolate. Mary, come now, drink your orange juice, both of you. Your bacon and eggs will be ready in a minute. As Mrs. Midas left the room, John took up his glass of orange juice and put it to his lips. As soon as he tilted it, the liquid began to flow into his mouth. A happy look came onto his eyes. Boy, that's good, he said at last, lowering the empty glass. Chocolate juice. Mary looked at John, and then she looked at her glass of orange juice. It was a bright orange color. She tasted it, and it tasted like an orange to her. It's not chocolate juice, she said. It's orange juice. Orange juice is good for you. Yes, John, Mrs. Midas said, hearing the last few words as she carried the tray of bacon and eggs. You must drink your... She caught sight of John's empty glass. John, she said, you're a good boy. That's the first time in ages you finished your orange juice without having being told to. It tasted of chocolate, John explained. All right, Mrs. Midas said. Very funny. But please don't tease Mary too much. Remember, Mary's younger than you. John silently picked up his fork and sliced the yolk of his fried egg. The yellow broke over the white, and he shivered as he watched it. I can't eat this, said he said to his mother. Of course you can, Mrs. Midas said. You drank your orange juice. Now try to eat your bacon and egg. 
John scraped up a small piece of egg and put it onto his mouth. It immediately became chocolate. Chocolate white and chocolate yolk. Both lovely chocolate. Mmm, John mumbled. Chocolate egg. In almost no time, he had finished every scrap of egg on his plate. Then he tried the bacon. The bacon turned to chocolate, too. John had never before enjoyed his breakfast so much. After the orange juice had turned to chocolate juice in his mouth, and the fried bacon and egg had turned into chocolate, he ate two slices of chocolate toast with chocolate butter and chocolate marmalade. He washed it down with a glass of chocolate milk. I'm very pleased with you this morning, Mrs. Midas said, as she helped John on put on his coat. If you promise to eat your lunch at school as well, as you ate your breakfast, I'll give you a dime to buy some chocolates with. Oh, that's all right, John said. I don't think I'll need it. Mrs. Midas looked puzzled as she waved goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed that chapter. I will see you guys again tomorrow for chapter four.